great spirit, breathing in and through all beings. This past year has been isolating, lonely, keeping us apart from friends, family, mentors, and how we've wanted it to be. Combined with other adversity, storms of many kinds in our national, global, and personal lives. We gather this commencement weekend to kindle light, to burn bright with the fire of love and hope, which no adversity or sorrow can subsume. Grant this generation of young people, including our graduates, hope as they go out beyond the familiar. Infuse them with courage, compassion, and wisdom to be instruments of healing peace. For these students, this college, and all who made sacrifices to bring them to this day, thank you. Amen. Members of the class of 2021 would like to give thanks for the people and life experiences which brought us to this day. We've strung these statements together into one litany of thanks. It goes like this. I would be nowhere without the seemingly infinite tolerance and generosity of my friends and family. Thank you. Thank you to my service dog, Fang, for always being the responsible one and also for introducing me to all of my friends. Thanks for that to you, Mom, for pushing me to go to college, and my girlfriend for pushing me to finish college. I just did the work. Thank you, everyone, for everything. To my parents, Uncle Mike and Aunt Laura, who all held me up when I stumbled, made me laugh when I wanted to cry, and kept me supplied with adorable cat pictures. Thank you for getting me here. Thank you to staff members who bring joy into the lives of countless students. This one goes out to Anna Butts, Susie Klinkhammer, Tina Michael, Laura Farmer, David Smigo, Ivy Reich, Sam Hebel, and so many others. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mom, Dad, and our chaotic yet wonderful cats. I owe it all to you. Thank you to David Yamanishi's International Politics, FYS, which gave me my major, my mentor, my roommate, and a group of friends who still talk about that one game of diplomacy even four years later. I want to thank myself for all the hard work and great steps. I couldn't have done this without the help of iced coffee and flaming hot Cheetos, and maybe my friends and family too. Thanks to mom, dad, girlfriend for your love, care, and support. Thank you to my roommate Madeline for calling the ambulance when I hit rock bottom. You are a gift. Thank you, mom for supporting me since the beginning, and thanks to my boyfriend for keeping me sane. I couldn't have done this without either of you. Thank you to Aaron, to Will, to Chantel, to Zach, to Anna, to Peyton, to you, Lizzie. I still think of late night target runs, walks to the quarry, and a duct tape locked box linked to a starry night conversation about soulmates. Thank you to the Fios who filled Mondays with a little more madness. To my parents, Ben, Papa, Brennan, and my grandmothers who are in my heart today. Thank you for the endless love and support. To my cats, I simply could not have done it without you. I want to thank my family, friends, and Bob's Burgers for helping me survive. Thank you to my family for supporting me through anything and everything. To my friends, change the narrative. Thanks for all the support, Mom and Dad. Sorry Dylan won't be this easy. Love you. To all my friends, family, professors, and everyone along the way, thank you for supporting me in my abnormal education journey. My family is loud at me. I came into Cornell not knowing how to multitask. Now I'm leaving feeling lazy when I'm only doing one thing. 
Thank you, mom and dad, for helping me through these past four years and supporting me every step of the way. To the ramen that kept me fed, the roommates who put up with my fourth week shenanigans, and the Phi Lambs who loved me no matter what, I couldn't have done it without you. I should have been a cowboy. Thank you to my mom, dad, and lovely girlfriend for helping me get to where I am today. It wouldn't have been possible without your love and support. Eternal gratitude for Casey's Pizza at 10 in the evening, and an everlasting gratitude to my friends gullible enough to go collect it for us when I was unwilling. Special thanks to my wrestling family, including coaches for pushing me, my parents for never giving up on me, and Professor Stephen Nisi for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. Thank you. Thank you to my family for your love from afar, to my professors who inspired me onto my path today, and to my friends for the late night laugh. Love you all. Thank you family, friends, boyfriend, Chipotle burritos, and Amazon's 30 day return policy for getting me to where I am today. Thank you to my lovely friends for the countless Bible studies, game nights, and social dances that have made my time at Cornell full of fun and growth. Also to my awesome roomie for all the haikus, scrabble games, late night existential crises, and overall root and toot and fun time together. To Hemi and Tia for giving me a home where I saw myself grow. Thank you, mom and dad, for all your love and support and money for textbooks throughout college and always lending an ear to hear about my engineering projects and adventures. My family, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and make amazing memories that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. I'm grateful for the Hilltop for strengthening my calves. Thanks to my parents for your unconditional support through the highs and lows of this journey. When I came to college, I thought the bar was low. Turns out it's pretty high. In fact, it's right up the hill. In the name of the compassionate and merciful. After the difficulty is the easing. After the difficulty is the easing. I call as witness the rosy glow of sunset, the night and its progression, the moon as it grows into fullness. Surely you shall travel from stage to stage. God makes night as a robe for you and sleep a repose, each day a resurrection. Also from the Quran. What will explain to you the path that is steep? It is the freeing of a slave from bondage, the giving of food in a day of famine to an orphan or to a needy stranger in misery or distress. It is to enjoin patience in adversity and encourage deeds of kindness and compassion. Here is what the Spirit is saying. Now, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. Now, love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. And extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse them. Don't be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Don't claim to be wiser than you are. Don't repay anyone evil for evil, but rather take thought as to what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, as it so depends on you, live peaceably with all. 
Peace and love, everyone. The one who beholds themselves in all beings and all beings in themselves. Who looks on the pleasure and pain of all beings as the person looks on them in themselves. That person I hold to be the supreme yogi. In his book, Mindful, A Practical Guide to Awakening, Joseph Goldstein writes, On a boat in the middle of a storm, one wise, calm person can bring everyone to safety. The world is like that boat, tossed by the storms of greed and hatred and fear. Can we be one of those people who helps keep it safe. Like the calm, tranquil water that's deep below these often storm-tossed seas of life, there is a peace with inside of each one of us. It's always there, even when we don't feel it. Working to tap into, to connect with this deeper self is why I've taught many of you meditation as well as calming breath and energy centered yoga and centering prayer to connect more and more with that deeper peace and less and less with the feelings and thoughts that come and go on the surface level so that you not only can tap this inner peace but also be this healing calm presence because how you carry yourself in life impacts those around you. How do we access this peace, especially when we don't feel it, especially when we need to lose it? And I want to first start off by saying, especially in this past year um, of so much adversity that you have gone through, that all of us have gone through, um, that it's okay to be completely undone. The Dalai Lama has moments when he's been undone. Jesus had moments when he was completely undone. There is a great Muslim mystic woman from many centuries ago whose name is Rabia and a uh, very wise woman. I have several of her quotes I've handwritten on the inside cover of my Bible and prayer book. And this um, wise woman, one of the things she said from her life, in which she also knew sorrow and adversity, she said, I was born on the day when all I once feared, I loved. That there is a whole alchemy, a whole transmuting of our difficulties when comes this moment of acceptance and having mercy towards all your sorrow, all the fear you may have over the unknowns facing you. It's similar to learning how to float. I don't know if you remember that, and maybe you haven't learned how to swim or to float, but there's a degree to which, um, yes, like everything else in life, including getting through your college experience, you've had to work hard and you effort, but then there is this combination of surrender that has to take place, this dropping beneath um, the overstriving and doing and entering an utter state of non-doing and relaxing into that. Sensing um, life or something upholding you, keeping you afloat, that you have to surrender. There is a yoga posture where the arms go out wide and it's not unusual for some people to find themselves crying in this pose. There's releasing so much held tension and gripping that many of us have. It's not unlike, and I'll just add quickly, you don't have to be a Christian in order to realize that this gesture of Jesus on the cross is one where um, there is a, he's not, let me just say it is a demonstration of how to deal with oneself. Just as in Buddhism, there's the idea of the acceptance of what is um, before you can um, find that peace. Um, with this outstretched arms, there's yes, um, the outcry, the acknowledgement, the permission to go ahead and experience anger and ache 
and to name that, but then they're also always held in creative tension with this, this surrender and letting go so that new life can come. I'm going to end with um, a story about um, someone who taught me firsthand about the way um, there is an alchemy of transmuting ache into strength, your vulnerability into your superpower. And that is um, a mentor of mine from my youth named Father Campin. I did not grow up Roman Catholic. I am not Roman Catholic, though I am a priest. He's someone who I wanted to emulate, uh, taught me um, about following in the way of humility and love. Every year um, in our high school, we had the option of whether we wanted a baccalaureate service or not. It was a public high school. And every year, the seniors would gather in the gym. And every year, back when I was a student, um, people raised their hand, yeah, we wanted this. And every year, the same person was elected, or people voted for. And every time it was for Father Campion, Catholic priest, hospital chaplain, a person who headed up apostolate to the handicapped, working with people with disabilities, helping them have dignity and a sense of um, their beauty and brilliance. And we voted for him every year. It was the same message we heard every year. We just needed to hear it again, as it was told to our brothers and sisters and older friends at their commencements. And that is his story about um, being an, a recovering alcoholic and how there'd be times when he uh, found himself on skid row. He'd tell that story every year. We all knew this, but we needed to hear it again that this amazing man who for many of us was a saint um, because of the good and the healing wholeness that he brought to many people's lives um, was as human as the rest of us that he had struggles imperfections and we thought that if God the universe could use a person like that to do so much greatness then maybe there's hope for um, for myself right each of us was thinking this um, that there's hope for the likes of people like me uh, to make a difference, even though I sometimes feel utterly lost and unsure about the future. So let me end with that, my friends, that all the adversity you've gone through has built character, has built confidence, I hope. When you think back to what you've gone through and how you endured, more like that quote from the Quran, how after the difficulty comes the easing and every time you've had this experience when you look back you realize how much stronger you are and while I will never ever say that God causes such horrible things to happen I do believe that the horrible things the challenges the difficulties get used for something good for a larger good that can help you be an instrument of healing and peace to help others who are struggling for you to have your sense of oneness with all who have ever struggled it keeps you humble and it helps you be a lover. Blessings to you on the journey. You're going to be great. You already are. Peace. Please join me in the closing dedication which weds parts of the priest prayer attributed to St. Francis with words by humanist Robert Ingersoll. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. My heart was filled with gratitude, with thankfulness, and went out and loved all the heroes and thinkers who gave their lives for the liberty of hand and brain. To all the wise, the good, the brave of every land, whose thoughts and deeds have given freedom. And then I vowed to grasp the torch that they had held, and hold it high, that light may conquer darkness still. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. May creator, great spirit, and holy lover, of whom our loves are hints, continue to abide in and through you and those you love and those you may struggle to love. Go in peace. Namaste.